Welcome to the Ambition Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Totera. Hello, everyone, and I just have one question. Who here stole my switch? Don't look at me, Ian. I don't know, Norman. Last uh, time we talked about it, you said that you didn't have a switch. Yes, that's it. Oh, wait, I have an update on my switch. Hmm. Yes, uh, totally don't have a switch. Right. Mm-hmm. Got my eye on you. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. the was updated. So anyway, uh, <laughs> in today's episode, we are going to review uh, the My Little Pony Ponyville Mystery Comics, issue number two. In this issue, the Cutie Mark Crusaders help Jeff Lutrosk. <laughs> uh, I just can't get past that. The, the, the Big Lebowski reference in here is one of the underlying, what do you call this? story <clears throat> anyway um help jeff latrotsky and walter figure out who is stealing bowling pins from the ponyville bowling alley so tara what did you think uh, sorry uh, first opinions and uh, what do you think at first i actually like the setup from the last comic we read months ago i like the setup and everything but then after it's like when you get to a certain point it's like oh you know who it is like as soon as they got to a certain point i'm like i know who it is just continue on let me just go go on oh oh okay uh i I guess you look at that thing and then like oh okay but no man like for me honestly i for i totally forgot like i i totally forgot what had happened in this comic and i came in blank like i came in not knowing anything and just reading and the thought of my mind is okay is you know what i'm not gonna uh, go into it because um it's spoilers i guess yeah but um overall the result kind of surprised me and not really because reasons but yeah uh, i am pretty happy with this Mm, that's good it was really good just I don't know, like, again, it was one of those things where it's like, you, you know what's going to happen, but it still had a nice meaning, and it had a nice ending. So, like, I'm not saying it's bad. I just, I just you knew what was going to happen. Yeah, I, I, I see what you mean. Like, if you uh, pay close attention, you could have guessed. Yeah. Mm. All righty then. So, anywho, if you have not read this comic yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So anyway, we start off the comic with, well, what happened last issue. Uh, the Lebowski, uh, sorry, um, the Trotsky and uh, Walter barge in the Kirima Crusaders clubhouse saying that they have a mystery for them. And the mystery is somebody is stealing bowling pins from the alley. Uh, Walter says it's a sabotage. Somebody is sabotaging them. From practicing and participating in the bowling tournament that they're gonna have, Lotrotsky here doesn't really think so and tries to well think logically and ask the Crusaders for help. Uh, and one of the few things that they mention is that uh, Walter here is close in uh, breaking the kingpin's uh, record or bowling record. Um, one of the few red herrings that they glitter all over the sh- comic is that um, the kingpin, he might have done it. Oh, We are not going to jump to conclusions just yet. So the girls go to the bowling alley and interview all of the uh, Ponyville bowling uh, team. And once they're there, we see that uh, there's the Trotsky, Walter, Mare Mare, Big Mac, and also Cranky. So we see we see this EMC trying to find fingerprints and whatnot. And Sweetie Belle says, "Yes, I know who did it. It could be the birds. Uh, this is the solution for the previous issue. No, no, Sweetie Belle, no, no. The, the girls decide to interview the bowlers." Saying that, uh, is there anyone here that uh, like hate you guys or don't want you guys to win? And they go through the whole scene where Latrosi says that oh, there's this. Uh, they were having complaints, 
uh, that they were making too much noise and whatnot. And Mayor Mayor says that was her and you invited them to join. Sorry, uh, she, uh, they invited her to join the team, which she did. So no issue there. And then uh, Mayor Mayor says uh, it could be Matilda, but Cranky says, no, not really. She She's a little... Uh, angry, but at least uh, she's happy that Cranky has a hobby now. And uh, Cranky says, didn't Applejack says that Big Bag is hanging around too much and not helping the farm? Uh, Big Bag says yes. And Walter just says, but didn't Gra Applejack and Granny Smith brought them uh, tarts and apple cider? to cheer them on for the tournament. So it's no one that they know of that's kind of sabotaging their game. So Apple Bloom here thinks, okay, uh, if it's not anyone local, it has to be someone foreign. So Apple, uh, Apple Bloom asks uh, Trotsky who, could, uh, who are the competitors. And uh, Lutrosi says, okay, there's uh, Cantalot, Cloudsdale, and Dodge Junction. So all three are far away and could be sabotaging them. They're going to figure it out and try to think of something. They go out, out, they go out of the alley and they stumble upon uh, Twist, Pip, Snips, and Snails. Quiz here says that what, what you guys are doing and they're tr the CMC says they're trying to solve a mystery in the boiling alley and whatnot. And Snip just says, ah, you couldn't solve anything if you tried. And Twist actually says, like, ah, they figured out why I was transforming into a team. But I ha you know what? I got no, I don't remember this. Like, did this really happen? You remember Terra? No? I have no idea. I think this is something that Silva would probably remember. Yeah, same here. Like, I, I think he would know. Maybe if I were to look up at the wiki, they'll say something about it. But as for now, I'm just going to say, as Silver. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But anywho, um, the... Uh, Snail says, oh, right, she did, did that. So the CMC says, okay, uh, we need to replenish our energy. So I'm going to pause. No. Yeah, I'm going to pause here. I'm going to pause here. So Tara, what do you think? S uh, beginning and setup. I like where we left off where it's like, oh, yeah, the last comic ended with these two showing up. And now we're starting with the, pretty much the same thing. And then it was funny how he was like, it's sabotage. <gasps> He's just yelling and then he has the paper bag and still shouting and then it's here that it's already showing yeah it's kind of obvious who it is like i say kind of because you know this is where they enter the bowling alley you see something it's like oh huh, that person looks familiar and then later on if you look closely like i don't want to give too much away without you know spoiling in case some people haven't seen it or you know if they're reading it as we're going along but if you look at uh, certain expressions on some uh, some ponies, they have a weird expression on their face. It's like, yep, okay, I know who it is. Ah, okay. So you uh, found out near the very beginning. I, I didn't. Like, I, I noticed the thing that kind of gave it away, but I didn't really thought much about it. I mean, like, huh, that pony looks strange. Okay, it's a picture of Kingpin, all right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Kingpin looks... Okay, the picture of Kingpin's there. And then, like, okay, yeah, I, I don't really think much about it. Yeah, well, whatever, whatever. Then, from that point on, I didn't really thought about it that much. Uh, but you did, so I, I guess that's the difference. Yeah. <laughs> all right, then. So, I... As for, uh, as for me, I, I kind of like it, like... I like how they continue on from last week's thing, and not in the same panel, mind you. It's uh, it's the it's the uh, sorry, the panel is shown from the point of view of the Trotsky going into the clubhouse. So that is something cool. Yes. And then we get the setup, we get the whole thing, and 
Yeah, I, I kind of like it. Like the beginning and setup is really good. Yeah, I like how they got the beginning and everything set up. Yeah, and the problem and trying to solve it. So okay, uh, I'm, if there's nothing, if there's nothing more, can I carry on? Yes, you can carry on. Okay, so, uh, Sweetie Belle says that the, she has an idea how to recharge their uh, energy or recoup their energy, and they go to Sugar Cube Corner. And they're eating cake. Haha, <laughs> yay, now I want cake. God damn it. <laughs> so they're eating cake and they say that, okay, how how in Equestria are we supposed to go to Cantalot, Cloudsdale, and Dodge Junction and try to solve this case? I mean, try to interview the suspect or whatever it is. I mean, it's kind of maddening. We're, we're just feelies. We're just kids. So for us to go there is kind of hard right now and guess who walks into the store it's Applejack Rainbow Dash and Rarity uh, Pinky greets them saying that hey, yo girls are you excited I'm having a uh, I'm having this uh, sorry um, this weekend uh, I'm having this weekend to celebrate the anniversary of the first time we ever threw a party for Gummy wow that's specific continuity <laughs> yay and uh, the girl says that they can't because Rarity needs to go to Cantalot to send some supplies to her shop. Um, Rainbow Dash needs to go through Cloudsdale because she promised to, well, her parents to visit them. <laughs> oh, okay. And Applejack has to go to the Josh, mm, Dodge Junction to deliver some stuff. And yo! Deus ex machina like perfect timing eh coincidence I think not yay so the next morning the girls all gathered at the train station following their res respective sister and the plan is try to find out about the opposing team and see if they are guilty for well uh, stealing the polling pins <coughs> so we start off with Apple Bloom at Dodge Junction and Applejack says that she needs to visit uh, Cherry Jubilee's assistant for the, you know, delivery of stuff. But Cherry Jubilee is part of the bowling team, so you can talk to her there. And I love the uniform for the bowlers here. They're black with red trimmings and it really looks great. Hey, that's my color. So... <laughs> Yay, but you have a little bit of purple, which one pony is. <laughs> uh, but anywho, Cherry Jubilee introduced the girls to them and Apple Bloom just, you know, asked the obvious question like, oh, where have you been? Have you been in <coughs> town and whatnot? And uh, the girls say, no, we've been practicing all week long because uh, Ponyville is the team, uh, is the favorite to win, but we're going to beat them. We're going to train hard and we're going to show our metal and we're going to beat them fair and square. So Dodge Junction doesn't seem to be the culprit. Okay. And we move on to uh, Cloudsdale. And Cloudsdale's team is composed of most of the Wonder Bolts. So, okay. Um, that's cool. We see Sorin and Spitfire and Spitfire shouting and whatnot. So, okay. And yeah, they, they're not the they're not the suspects too because they seem to be training really really hard <laughs> and we see sweetie bell in cantalot and yeah same thing uh their team captain i'm assuming is uh who name is pony this fancy pants yes fancy pants yes uh, moon dancer here says that oh yeah yeah okay me blind me no see <laughs> <laughs> So anywho, uh, Fancy Pants Fancy Plan says to Moon Dancer, uh, no unicorn magic because we want this, uh, we want to win this tournament legit. And we see uh, Twilight's parents. Yay, they're in the team too. Woo! <laughs> oh, boys. So anywho, um, the next day they return back with um, nothing, with no answer to their problems and i'm gonna pause here because i want to see, i want to find out what you think like what do you think of the sleuthing the what um uh, investigation yes 
I find it pretty normal how it's like they try not to make it obvious. So it's like, oh, we're doing a school project. And then you see all these teams in their bowling alleys and all these bowling alleys are different. So obviously, you know, Dodge Junction where it's all old and Western, you see like that the building's completely out of wood. Basically, everything's out of wood in there. And then you see Cloudsdale mm -hmm. where the bowling alley in there and the benches and everything, it's rainbows. It's like, okay, this is pretty cool. And in Canada, it's, just, you know, all this diamonds and fancy stuff it's like this is pretty cool look at even with their uniforms how it's uh all different as well and it's pretty cool to see yeah, yeah it is cool too but like other than that like uh, in anything with the uh team or investigation I, I guess it's the investigation part is only on apple blooms and yeah because it, the rest is just uh just them looking like oh, okay this ain't this ain't it <laughs> yeah and I, I just love that uh, Twice parents are there and they want to, like, I, yeah, I, I can just imagine what um, Twilight Velvet and Inkwell just give Twilight a message saying that they will be in town for a bit and want to hang out after the tournament. Like, yeah. that, that's cool. That, that's headcanon me talking. Like, but you know what? If, if you are a... Uh, child, parents, or whatever it is, and they're coming to town, they'll do that, right? It's just not me, right? No, I don't think it's not not you. Yeah, so it's everyone. Like, uh, they, they'll just uh, message saying that I'll be around for a few bits. Uh, I'm going to come and visit when I'm done. Like, that, that's cool. That's cool. Also, what, um, Princess of Friendship have no time for family? Oh, pa. <laughs> the, the scandal. A nerve. I know. So anyway, let's move on to the next thing. Uh, like I mentioned before, CMC gets back to Ponyville feeling dead tired because, well, they just had a round trip and no time to really rest. So they report back to each other that they didn't sign anything and it seems that all of the teams participating don't really want to cheat. They're working their butts off and trying to win this legit because well they have good sportsmanship unlike some players in some video games hey what's that supposed to mean i'm not saying about you do you play the fortnites no do you use aim hacks <laughs> good so anywho um they, they were talking about it and apple bloom just noticed that huh it seems that Snip and Snails are not the only... Oh, sorry. Uh, it seems that they're not the only ones that are st that tired. It seems like Snip and Snails are tired too. Oh, okay. Whatever. <laughs> so, <Okay>. Latrosi comes... <laughs> Latrosi <laughs> comes barging into the school, uh, saying to the CMCs that... Um, the It's happened again. The pulling pins are gone. Oh, no. And uh, Mr. Lee says... Mr. Trotsky, what is the meaning of this? Dude. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. <sighs> this is dumb. <sighs> okay. I, I guess if you watch The Big Lebowski, you, you'll probably get it. But anywho, uh, Latrotsky says that uh, they were practicing and they left for just a bit, or maybe just for a few hours, and uh, the thief must have come really early morning and stole everything. And, oh God, no, that's terrible. That's very terrible. Uh, we see Walter screaming sabotage. And this is just not great at all. So when they arrive at the bowling alley, uh, they see a new person. Uh, Apple Bloom asks, who's this person? And Mer Mer introduced them to KP. Uh, and he's the kingpin the picture on the what you call this mantle and whatnot he's the record holder for best game i guess and he's going to help them see what he can do because well the record has been up there for a really long time and he doesn't really mind if walter breaks the record because well he's an old fogey and he wants to see the new generation do stuff and if his record got broken well it's there for a long time now, so his legacy is just that legacy. He's not playing anymore, so I guess it doesn't really matter to him that much. But when he told his grandson that he's uh, that he doesn't really care about the record, his grandson 
didn't really uh, like it that much. He's not thrilled. And when Scootaloo asks who is his grandson, they say it's Nips. And they kind of guess who... Well, not really guess, but they want to confront uh, Snips and ask what up. When they go back to the schoolhouse, uh, Snips and Snails are gone. So they rush out, going to Snips and Snails, uh, well actually Snips' house, and it seems that they were the one taking all the pins. Oh no! How could I not see this? Like literally, I did not saw that coming. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, Grandpa KP here kinds of want to school uh, Snips, but when he explains why, uh, he seems that uh, well, Snips says that he didn't really want Grandpa's record to be broken because uh, Grandpa seems really proud of his record and. He's proud of it too. But eh, like Grandpa says, it's the, the record is there for a mighty long time. I, I'm guessing over 10 years. So he's, he's, he's just reliving the old glory days. And he, like I mentioned before, he's not playing bowling anymore. So it doesn't really matter to him. So in the end, um, the pins are returned and everybody has a good hug. And the next day, uh, when the All Equestria Bowling Tournament held in Ponyville, okay, that's cool. Uh, when the bowling, sorry, uh, when the tournament is about to start, Mimir does her whole speech. She just wants to say, dedicate an honor to uh, uh, to KP for, well, being an inspiration to the Ponyville Bowling Team and whatnot, blah, 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 and so on. And also to the Cutie Mark Crusaders or Super Sloofers for solving the mystery. And episode ends. Yay! <laughs> so, um, Tara, final, um, final thoughts. So, like I said before, how... So, when they first sh- showed the picture of Kingpin, I thought, I'm like, wait a minute, that looks like Snips, but he just has a mustache. What the? And then later on... This is what I was talking about, where you look at the face and they're like looking at each other like, huh, do you think they know? And then they're looking at each other like, huh, they're talking about the missing bowling pins. And then, you know, they have all these faces of suspicious. And then later on, you know, they fall asleep and it's like, yeah, it's them. It's them. You know, it's them. (laughs) And then later on, it was them. But it does have a good lesson about how it's like, you know, sometimes records need to be broken. You got to save it for the new generation. Which is true. Some like you know, you have a record or something, and also it's, you got these new people. They're faster than you, or so on and so forth. It's like, yeah, let's let them have their chance in the spotlight. And the the comedy is pretty good too. Like I did have a good chuckle where everyone just runs out, and then Sherry's like, "But what about class?" And then they come back. They're like, "We're snipping snails. They're gone. You want to tell me what?" And then they just leave again. <laughs> yep. Oh man. Some letters are going to be sent out. <laughs> but all in all, in all it's, it's a pretty decent s- s- comic. And I like, yeah. like the ending, how they put the name of the place in Kingpin's name. Yeah, that, that's awesome too. So he'll be immortalized that way also. And um, for me, uh, when, when, when we passed by the picture, I thought, oh, that looks like snips like it could be his father or something like that oh okay i mean does it matter i mean i i guess his father is a really good player okay i mean whatever and uh we when, when the whole thing happens i i didn't really thought much like uh when we go outside the bowling alley i, I to me i didn't really thought about it that much i mean like looking at now looking at it okay i s- can see the expressions that okay yeah they they they're sus like uh they're really sus yeah like uh, uh, did you vent it did you two vent it so yeah i mean now looking at it it's sus but at at first glance it doesn't really matter and yeah 
I guess these two things really call them out. But it really took me a while to figure out because uh, I'm expecting to see the kingpin or I was expecting the kingpin to be the guilty party. But as we found out with the reveal, kingpin is an old man and it's Snape's grandfather instead of father. So that kind of threw my theory out the window because um, him saying that he didn't really care about the record means that he already lived a long and fulfilled life with the record. So that means he doesn't care anymore. So exactly. which is kind of okay. Yeah. So with that, um, overall, the whole story was pretty good. I, I, I like it. And uh, here's one of the things where I'm guessing that next issue they're going to be bored because there's no setup like the mystery will come on its own I guess yeah because they don't really at the end it's not really they don't have much of a setup for another mystery so it makes you wonder what they're going to do for the next one yeah but I do like this one one and two is one of those things where uh, they have to kind of a breadcrumb a little to make people buy the second issue to see uh, how how they like it. But um, with this one, uh, they at the end, they say the end and people might think, oh, it's just a two-issue thing and I, I guess there's no more. But there is. There is one more issue with issue number three and that's going to be another interesting one indeed yes yes so anyway uh let's wrap it up so anyway if you guys have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can contact us at the com. you can also reach us on the twitter the twitter my that's right the show's twitter account is at the MBS show and my personal twitter account is on sanzo Tara, where can the good people find you well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324. Or they could just do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Cool. Go check him out, guys. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, switch to radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PrinjoLive.com. Links will be in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Master of Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. Anyway, I have been Roman Sanzo. And I am Tortera. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the BS Show. See ya. Bye-bye. Man, I wish I can play bowling right now. It's been so long. I, I want to play this hybrid bowling where you bowl and solve a crossword puzzle. What? I know, right? It's one of those mystery things. Like you bowl, get a strike, and then you solve a, uh, solve a crossword puzzle. See, see me, that's not more of a mystery. That's more of why. Why would you do that? It's a mystery. <laughs> that's bad. Bye-bye. <laughs>